Ascension is achieved through connecting deeply with our Creator through the natural cyclical processes that allow us to fully realize who we are and what we're capable of. We can tap into these cyclical systems by first starting with our bodies through meditation. Within us are energy fields that can be harnessed and utilized through transcendental meditation. When we meditate, we are focusing the internal cycles and taking control of them. And when we do this, some interesting phenomena can happen. When we focus our internal energy fields, we can extend and strengthen them by connecting further into the external energy forces that are a part of the matrix energy grid work. This process can be activated through Kundalini awakening. Kundalini meditation comes to us primarily from the Hindu Upanishad text 800 to 500 BC. Kundalini refers to a life force which rests within our body at the base of our spine which can be activated and circulated throughout our body as a life force to elevate our consciousness. This force is described in Hinduism as Kundalini Shakti, literally meaning coiled serpent. When this serpent energy is activated, it powerfully outstretches throughout the body and creates a potent force. This force is not just some superstition of ancient religion. Rather, it's a practical force that was known and described by ancient religions such as Hinduism. The yogis of old taught us how to activate this life force through various yoga and meditation techniques. In the Garanda Samhita, one of the classical early modern Hindu texts, we find an early explanation of the potentiality of Kundalini. The great goddess Kundalini, the primordial energy of the self, sleeps in the sexual region of the body. She has a form rather like a serpent, having three and one half coils. As long as she remains asleep, the individual soul is limited and true knowledge does not arise. Scholars have attempted to draw comparisons with the descriptions of Kundalini and the human anatomical structure for many years. One such correlation is the body's cerebral spinal fluid system. Cerebral spinal fluid is a transparent plasma that runs through the spinal cord, around, and in the brain. It helps in providing nourishment, protection, and waste removal from the brain. The fluid channel can clear the brain of bacteria and viruses. In an article for the NIH's National Library of Medicine titled Physiology, Cerebral Spinal Fluid, we find that CSF is propelled along the neural axis from the site of secretion to the site of absorption, mainly by the rhythmic systolic pulse wave within the choroidal arteries. Lesser determinants of CSF flow are frequency of respiration, posture, venous pressure of the jugular vein, and physical effort on the individual and time of day. Ascension of consciousness is achieved through a harmonizing of the spirit machine, through a controlling of the body with the mind, and elevating the mind through the controlled yogic cycles of the body. Together, they create a feedback loop, one not possible without the other. The search for the anatomical explanation for Kundalini didn't stop at the cerebral spinal fluid. Vasant G. Rele, a prolific scholar on modern interpretations of sacred Hindu philosophies, concluded that Kundalini was referring to the human nervous system. Writing in his monumental 1920s work, The Mysterious Kundalini, he reveals that the serpent energy of the ancient text is that of the vagus nervous system. As he states here, a yogi, through the vagus, or more accurately, through the vagosympathetic nerve, either by direct or reflex action, more particularly the latter, establishes a complete control over the unconscious automatic action of the involuntary muscular fibers. This is what a yogi desires, so that the normal automatic action may not interfere with his desire of becoming one with him who is all-pervading. The vagus nerve system relays information from the brain to all the internal organs. It is the channel and pathway from the brain to the vital centers within the body, which is responsible for calming our organs and mind so as to stabilize them into tranquility. The vagus is outstretched from the brain down to the sex organs, just as the classical yogis described the kundalini to be. Being that it interconnects all the vital organs, it could play a massive role in healing our body. Deliberately sending healing information throughout our body through the vagus nervous system would be a massive benefit of being able to wield and control kundalini. 
to control our spirit machine was the goal and ability of the classical yogis who sought to ascend reality through kundalini yoga. Aside from controlling our body and producing healing abilities, it was understood that purifying ourselves from within would lead to a spiritual ascension that could allow us to rise to higher dimensions. By clearing ourselves of the low energies caused by the central reality's reptilian brain network, we elevate our spirit machine, and with it, we can change our subconscious programming, creating a deliberate self-reprogramming that in effect creates an elevated reality as this energy is fed into the source and delivered back to us where it is received in the sub-dimension of our consciousness. The more we practice raising our overall physical and mental health, the more clear and potent this energy force becomes. All around us are behavior programs that tell us how to feel about certain subjects, and through these, our lives are changed as we are slowly conditioned to accept social norms that may have detrimental effects on our spiritual lives. The forgetting of who we are, in our essence, seems to be a part of this simulation. We don't remember where we came from prior to our current incarnation, and we don't know where we are going. Could it be possible? that through heightened consciousness we could retain memory as we pass through the transition of death. Just as we drift into sleep, there is that crucial moment of going from waking consciousness to dreaming consciousness. That quick moment constitutes a sort of death of the mind, which is rebirthed into the dream world. In the dream world, we aren't always conscious of who we are in the real life. It takes some effort to become lucid and wake up to who we really are. Death may be the same. But to avoid the reincarnation cycle, which severs our remembrance, we might have to elevate and ascend this program to reach our higher self, which will cease to undergo this cycle. This cultivating of our consciousness is important to break the reincarnation cycle and to ascend the Archon program that keeps us locked into the simulation being recycled as energy to fuel their illusory reality. To individuate ourselves, we have to expand our consciousness and see that there is a source, and that it is this source which gives us our identity. Only by waking up and realizing who we really are and where we came from can we truly individuate and pass through the transition of death with an unbroken sense of consciousness and regain our infinite and immortal higher self. To build and remember our essence is to retain our infinite self, which is always existent, but only forget so as the energetic transference between death and rebirth swipes the lower vibrating consciousness that has not obtained ultimate willpower. When our higher selves were created in the beginning of all things, they were made to be infinite as our creator intended. At that exact moment that our higher selves were created, our shadow or our lower selves also emanated forth into the space-time dimensions. The I that we perceive to be here on this earth is really the lower self. Adding to this, our avatar in this matrix also cast a shadow down into the lower realms, and that mind is truly a shadow self, catching all discarded and suppressed emotion. To become our higher self, we have to reconcile our separate minds, first with purifying our lowest self to resonate with our space-time self, and then bringing both into vibration with our highest self. Once all three can join and reconcile the dues of samsara, we gain a conscious awareness of all past, present, and future. Through that ascended mind, we can see the path before us of the higher realms, no longer held back by the limiting senses of our earth bodies. From that vantage point, we can truly know what it means to be alive and truly begin to understand who our Creator is and how we can rejoin with it in the infinite plane of Source, the eternal splendor of heaven.